So we started 10,000 Redwoods when we had uh, been developing some plans for some large-scale restoration in the lower Lagunitas. Right where we're standing actually is one project where it's, we're doing a mile-long restoration of the river corridor. It's so hard to say how many volunteers we have. I mean, hundreds and hundreds a year, and, and they range from classrooms coming out to learn about how to restore habitat to uh, our dedicated, dedicated nursery crew that uh, has just you know, brought 9,000 plants uh, to be able to be the understory for these redwoods that we're growing. So uh, all ages, all abilities. We threw the number 10,000 out there because we wanted it to be large and lofty and get people excited to help because it's impossible to do it alone. 10,000 is also the number in a lot of um, ancient Asian cultures to mean infinite. Uh, I think our personal goal is uh, to revegetate the Lagunitas watershed where the salmon are found, but we've already started developing partnerships with other people throughout the historic Redwood Range, including um, East Bay Parks and uh, some people in Sonoma. So redwoods depend on um, fog, so we try to plant them in coastal fog belts. They like fairly narrow canyons, uh, valleys that aren't too wide, or too exposed, too much sun. Well, I think it's a really complex word, carbon sequestration, but in reality we all learned about photosynthesis in the third grade. And it's just this idea that carbon in the atmosphere is what's causing climate change. And simply put, uh, trees through photosynthesis or plants through photosynthesis are taking in this atmospheric carbon, they're releasing oxygen that we breathe, and then this carbon is being stored as sugars in their roots and in, in their cells. And so until they're decomposing and re-releasing carbon back into the atmosphere, it's stored on our planet. Most of our planet's carbon is actually in our soils.